Okay, welcome to the introduction to the IPython notebook. Uh, this content is designed to show you how to get the IPython notebook onto your uh, onto your own computer, as well as giving you a few pointers as to how it works. So first of all, what is the notebook? Well, the notebook is an environment in which you can do a bit of coding, and it's the environment which we will be using for you to practice some of the mathematics that you will be required on this course. So let's start straight away with how you can get the notebook. So you want to have a quick go into your uh, web browser and go to www.continuum.io. This is a free distribution. It's free, it's free software. It's open source, so you can readily download it and install it. Uh, you can go to download and download it for Windows, Mac, and for Linux as well. Once you've downloaded it and run the installer, you will get something called the Anaconda Navigator. And this Anaconda Navigator will load up the notebook, or will load up a launcher, which you can then use to launch the Jupyter Notebook. There's a whole load of coding environments that it installs as well, which if you're interested, you can go into it, but the notebook is what we will be interested in. So if we just click Launch, it runs through a number of commands and brings you to your notebook. If we zoom in on this, if you zoom in, it gives you a file structure and you can navigate to the folder in which you want to work. Okay, so what is a notebook? Well, let's have a look at the notebook material. So here we have an example notebook. At the moment, it doesn't look to be too insp a too inspiring <coughs> environment. It's hard to tell what's going on, but you can see it consists of different cells. Okay. And these are all, there's not a lot going on in them, but these are all what we call text cells. They're called markdown cells. When you first load up a notebook, it doesn't give us anything in the way of coding. But if we scroll down, we can see we have a code, book, code box here. And it's labeled by this in label. So this means it's expecting you to run some code inside the box. Now, we don't have any boxes here, but what we can do is we can add them. So if we want to add a box above, we just select the cell on the left here and press the A key. This will add a cell above the selected cell. If you want to add a cell below, we press the B key. And this creates the cells that we need to work with. By default, it creates a code cell. Now you can change the type. So this is a code cell. You can tell it's code because it highlights particular operators in different colors. We can add a cell below this, but we want to create a text cell. Now, if you want to convert this to a text cell, we just select it and we change its type by converting it to a markdown cell. That's the M key. Now, it doesn't look like a lot's changed, but if we run the code in this cell by clicking Shift, Enter, it formats the text as we would expect. Working more inside the code, the, the, the inside the text cell, we can mark up headers by having a hash symbol. On a Mac, it's Alt 3. And we simply stack the headers by having different numbers of hash keys. format that text, you see that we get the different levels of headers. We can also do bulleted lists. So this is a bullet list. We have an asterisk to indicate that. If we want to have an indented bullet, we put a space. And we can have a secondary indented bullet. And you see it formats the text accordingly. OK, so that gives you an overview of a cell. Now, if you want to remove a cell, we just need to press the X key. And that will completely delete the cell. We do have an undo delete cells option, but you want to not rely on that. So take care. OK, so let's think about the code cells. So we have a code cell here. If I just execute this code cell, we'll get an error. 
because this is expecting code. Now, what we can do is add a hash symbol before that to do what we call commenting the code. Now, if I run the cell, nothing happens because that essentially makes that text invisible to the coding. But what we can do is we can do some arithmetic. So we can start typing in one plus one, execute the cell, and we start to get some intelligible output. As we go through the course, there are a number of conventions that we'll be using. The first convention is the use of guidance boxes. So these will appear in the various exercises that you're going to be using. So the first type of box that I want to draw to your attention, because it's one of the first you'll encounter, is a warning box. So this is a warning in red, and that we use it to highlight any common mistakes or misconceptions that students tend to make. And when you come to university, there will be a number of ways in which you'll have learned things that while they've worked very well for you up until now, once we start really pushing your understanding, we need you to revisit those concepts. And the red dialog boxes will bring to your attention those things which you need to revisit. The next type of dialog box is a hint or a tip. So this is where we will uh, highlight any hints or tips for the current task or things that might help you in the future. If anything here is useful, then make a note of it so it might be of useful for you in the future. The next one, the most common one you'll find, is the action dialog box in yellow. So this will give you instructions for you to carry out, whether it's entering code, whether it's typing code out, whether it is uh, discussing with colleagues and making notes. Uh, these, these will give you an idea of the tasks that we want you to carry out. This will help develop your mathematics skills. It will help develop your coding skills as well. And the final bit is a link dialog box in green. So where anything is needed from other parts of the course specifically, or where it will specifically link to other parts of the course, this will be highlighted in green. Now, everything you do here will be of use to you in the future. However, if there's a specific case study, we will reference this in the link box. Okay, so that about covers all of the conventions that we're going to use here. Um, We've put a, I've put a list of notebook basics. This will appear in your first notebook, but this gives you an idea of the keyboard shortcuts of what you're going to do. Shift and Enter will run code. The left margin will select the cell, selecting it and pressing A, selecting it and pressing B, and so on. And it tells you how to convert between Markdown, the text cell, and how to convert to the code cells. And key thing, remember to save your work. The last feature I want to show you here is in typing mathematics. So one of the things that this, that this uh, is very powerful for is for rendering mathematics in the text cells. Now if we want to have, let's convert this to a text cell by pressing M. If we want to have an equation, for example, our ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT, well, that looks okay. We can understand that. We know what's going on. Let's think of a different equation, however. Let's think of the Planck relation, which is E equals H nu. Now, nu is difficult because this is actually a V, which doesn't appear correctly. So what we need is a Greek letter nu. And it's difficult to render it here because if we do that, it looks like a V. So what we need to do is we need to have a mathematical equivalent. So instead, we use this LaTeX environment. So in order to enter the maths environment, we need to use the dollar symbol. So enter a dollar symbol. That tells the computer that it's expecting mathematics. And then we type the equation E equals H. And of course, we don't want a V. We want a Greek letter. So we can enter a command with a slash new. And the, it goes green saying, I've identified this as code. And then you close the maths off with the dollar sign. And then you can execute the code. This applies to a great many things. If you're wanting to look at trigono trigonometry, you want to have x equals r cosine theta, for example. It allows you to easily render and easily access the mathematics in there. And finally, you can do extremely advanced equations with this as well. So if you'll bear with me, as I type this out, uh, we want to have sigma.
Okay, so this should hopefully, then we want to close the maths environment. So this should now hopefully give us really quite a complex looking equation. Okay, so that gives you an overview of the Jupyter Notebook. Hopefully it will, get, it will help you when you start, uh, start, start doing the coding. Uh, but do install it on your own computer. Have a go, have a bash. There's all sorts of coding tutorials out there. I'd strongly recommend that you get involved with the coding community um, because it's an interesting thing. It's a very useful skill to have um, and it will help you. The more you do, the more it will help you in your course. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you in class and enjoy.